Oki gugu wakwe akaro ni biti ati lanfa ni ati ma agbo wa ni gugu wakwe ye. Oru kote mini ola yomi koiki. Emi ni agbe nuso baba wa chief sunday. Igbo wo. Moki ni biti eba ti ni anfa ni ati ma afi ma agbo wa ni ouro yi. Ago meri abo ni olu ni ilu ibadon. Ni biti ati mu awonwa yi wasi ojo yi. I say very good morning to those of you that have joined us at exactly 4.35 a.m. today, the 26th day of April 2021. As you've been following the update that we done about some few minutes ago, I would just re-emphasize on some of the little of what took place. I will not go into so much details. But we will update everyone, first and foremost, that Chief Sunday, Igbowo and his family are all okay. Likewise, all the units and those that are working with him. Once again, there is no, um, nothing more than the federal government of Nigeria that have again done the best of what they know to do best. Threatening, trying to kill, kidnap. And that is what has happened at the resident of Chief Sunday, Igbo's house. Just before two o'clock in the morning, There was a couple of gunshots, and when I say couple of them, quite a lot of them, and uh, the the security unit activated the emergency across all the units, and everyone was put on a full red alert. And that means there was a real danger as well. And the danger means that there was threat to life. There was threat to those that are living in that residence of Chief Sunday, Igbo's house at Soka. We would like to inform the world of what the federal government of Nigeria have done. A lot of us might not understand what and why Chief Sunday Igbo is fighting for. He's not fighting for himself. Likewise, is he fighting for his family alone? He is fighting for the lives of millions of Yorubas, both inside the Yoruba land and outside the Yoruba land. And that is the offense between Chief Sunday, Igbo, and the federal government. The federal government have decided using their military might to come down to the resident of Chief Sunday Igbo's house for reason known to them and reason known to those behind it as well. Let us just give you some kind of a recap of some of the previous incidents that is also gone on record because this is not the first time that Chief Sunday Igbo has been a person of interest to the federal government. The federal government knows that Chief Sunday Igbo is fighting 
on behalf of his people. And the worst that the federal government of Nigeria, in partnership with their crime Yoruba politicians, wants to shut down Chief Sunday Igbo from not speaking. They want to bring him down from not doing what is best for his people. The federal government does not want Chief Sunday Igbo to bring justice, peace, unity among the Yoruba people. And that is why he has been the interest of the federal government. Let's play back to some of the incidents that have touched Chief Sunday Igbo from the time he started talking about the Fulani that are killing his people that have not allowed his families and when I use the word his family that means his Yoruba brothers and sisters mothers and fathers from making life meaningful for them Chief Sunday at the Igbo last year October said he will be coming out for the rally that was held across the world and we all saw what took place where more than 500 security operatives was brought down close to his vicinity at his resident at Soka we have evidence and record of that so that means since last year that Chief Sunday Igbo had interest asking for the peace and the unity among the Yoruba away from the killings that is taking place in the Southwest. October 1st rally that was held across the world. It was not the same in Ibadan at the residence of Chief Sunday Igbo where the whole DSS operation boss, the military, all gathered and refused entry of those that wanted to go along with Chief Sunday for that peaceful rally last year, October. I am just taking you back to some of the previous incidents. And that went on record that a man that wants peace was not allowed a peaceful rally among his people. Let's fast track it forward. Since October 1st, his name has become a global phenomenon. His name has become an interest to the northern Fulani oligarchs that wants to keep him short. They've used different ways to plead with him. They've sent proxies. They've sent different people. I'm talking about since last year. To try to see if they can bring him closer to them. So that he can keep his mouth shut. They've sent people to woo him with money. They've sent different politicians to speak with him. But he refused to be bought. He refused to be aligned with the fraudulent federal government and all those behind them working. So that means he is now a threat to the federal government of Nigeria. We are no longer Nigerians because Nigeria constitution has been void. But since Chief Sunday Bowo's name has continuously continuously been ringing among the Yorubas and the non-Yorubas and he has been a man that have stood his ground that all he wants 
is that he wants his people to be free. But the federal government and the Fulani Aousa Caliphate does not want Chief Sunday Igbo's to free his people. The federal government of Nigeria does not want Chief Sunday Igbo to free his people. And that means he has become a target. And that target means captured alive or killed if possible. The federal government knows very well that the Yorubas around the world prefer to believe in Chief Sunday Igbo than all the politicians across the Yoruba land. And that means his name has become a security for the Yoruba people. But this is what the federal government does not want. And a lot of the politicians, they don't want that because that is a big problem for them. In January, let's remind you, just before the end of January, Chief Sunday Igbo and his team went to a few places to confront the terrorists within the Yoruba land. That was before January. We saw the videos and the evidence where they went to a very remote part of the Yoruba land where terrorists have been using that places to kill, kidnap, maim, destroy the Yoruba people. Then just as we were getting into the January 2021, he took a trip down to Ibaraba because there was a crime that was taking place at Ibaraba. There was a crime on the Yoruba people, his family. There was a crime that was happening in the Okeogun axis in the southwest of Yoruba land in Oyo State precisely. Chief Sunday Bowo, hearing the news of all these atrocities, again, let us also remember that the international law, because we do not believe in that fraudulent 1999 constitution, according to the international law, Chief Sunday will have the right to defend his people because his people's life has been in danger. His people's life has been put where everyone have now become a target so he took a trip down himself with some of his team he took his trip down to Okeogun and I'm sure every single one of us witnessed saw what took place down at Okeogun. When one man living there have become a threat to lives and properties, one man has become a own his own government in Okeogun axis, and that is no one more than the Seriki of Igogon. I hope I got it right. The Seriki of Igogon have been living within us. For more than three decades. But out of those three decades. Out of those three decades. Out of those three decades. Lives have been a big threat 
to our Yoruba family and friends living in that axis. A lot of you remember when a video surfaced online of a Yoruba woman that went back to his, to her farm and witnessed the atrocity on that farm. I will remind you what she said. Seriki, what did you call me? Seriki, Okomiloba Jai. That was the voice of that woman. I'm sure some of you remember that. And again, there's record for that as well. That video went viral. That video touched a lot of us. Now, why has it become a problem for the Yorubas on our land, not in the northern part of the country, to go to the farm? Why has it been that so many Yorubas now cannot make it to the farm? That video also brought the attention of not just myself, but millions of you around the world and inside the Fulani Caliphate government known as Nigeria. Because there was nothing called Nigeria until we were amalgamate in 1914. So that means the voice of that woman also popped up to the ears of Chief Sunday Gbowo. If that was not enough, the one man that was touched was Dr. Fatai Aburidi. And that was why Chief Sunday decided to visit Igogon. On the visit to Igogon, he stopped at the father, the late Dr. Aburidi's house. He promised the father and the mother that justice will be served. Justice will be done for a man that had PhD came back, set up a mechanized farming, and he was butchered to death by the Fulanese in that axis. But there was a man known as Seriki that had been the, the intermediary between people that are kidnapped or people that are missing. That was a person of interest to Chief Sunday Bowo. Chief Sunday Bowo decided to pay him a visit. Chief Sunday Bowo visit to Seriki Gogon also was a kind of conversation that people thought was never going to happen in the history of the Yoruba people. Chief Sunday Bowo gave Seriki seven days. Seven days. Seven days to vacate that land. If otherwise, by the time he comes back after seven days, Seriki will know who is Chief Sunday Bowo. The government, both the state and the federal, wanted to protect the terrorist man that is called Seriki in the Gogon, that have created havoc, crime, destroyed millions of lives and properties. And as at the time of the seven days approaching, I flew in into the country. And I witnessed that seven days of the notice that was given to Seriki Igongo. That took me and Chief Sunday Igongo and all his hard working team that are working tirelessly day and night to Ibarakpa. The day of Ibarakpa was nothing more than another serious situation and that situation meant that the world was watching was chief sunday going to go back to ibarapa 
was on the leaves of millions of us. And he decided to make it back. But Tzadiki, that was given the confidence to stay put by the fraudulent Fulani government, just like they've done with all the terrorists that are killing many across Nigeria. The same terrorists that are done so much injustice to millions of Nigerians today is also why Seriki thought it will be secured. I am just giving you a kind of a timeline before we get to what happened at the early hours of this morning so that everybody can know that Chief Sunday Bowo and the federal government of the Fulani Caliphate is not just today. So, we know that the federal government of the Fulani Caliphate will wake up in the morning and deny that they have nothing to do at about 2 a.m. when they wanted to have a siege. And there's enough evidence at the previous video of so many gunshots. Those gunshots you were hearing with the gunshot of the federal government that sent their security operatives to the resident of Chief Sunday Bowo. And that means there was threat to life. There was threat to those surrounding Chief Sunday Bowo and his team. But because of the gallant team behind Chief Sunday Bowo, they were able to suppress the situation. The situation lasted for about two and a half hours. But they were pushed back. Igongong took place. Seriki left. Let's fast forward. While that was not enough yet, it was just the same way at the early hours of one morning when Chief Sunday Igbo's old resident went in flame. Again, it shows that people that wanted him to keep short thought by bringing down that building will make Chief Sunday Igbo go away fade away he refused to he refused to leave he refused to stop because he knows that the only way he can save the lives of his people is to stand shoulder to shoulder and defend what he believes on but the federal government of Nigeria and their cohorts does not want that. After the fire at his house, we thought it was going to go quiet. Until a few weeks again after that, just like an ordinary individual that have the right to travel and move around whenever he wants to, Chief Sunday Bowo does not need the permission of the Fulani Ausa government when he's traveling, when he's going out, or when he's moving from one end to the other. But the federal government does not want that. Again, they wanted to shut him down. But this time around, it was a kind of a different shutdown they wanted to play on him. Again, evidence have it as well. And that evidence means just on a Friday, on his way to Lagos for a meeting, the Fulani government had a different plan. The Fulani government had a different agenda. The Fulani government had an helicopter parked somewhere within Ibadan. 
And what was the purpose of that helicopter? Was to capture Jeep Sunday Bowo and take him away to an unknown location. But what the federal government does not know is Chief Sunday Bowo is not just a man because of who he is. He's also loved by millions of people. And that millions of people that witness that atrocity that took place on that fateful Friday afternoon right at Lagos Ibadan Expressway at a very sunny day where again they were in their numbers and they were not just in their numbers they were with heavy machine guns and we saw that in the hands of some of those DSS that came that wanted to again either kidnap and if that fails maybe to kill him because by killing him we mean the Yorubas would not, wouldn't have any other person to rely on. By killing him will mean that Yorubas will become more fearful of the Fulani Aousa government that is presently running the affairs of the constitution called Nigeria on a fraudulent 1999 constitution backed by their own Yorubas and some of the Southeast that wants to keep us together by fire, by force. Even though we know that the amalgamation that was brought together to join us was a fraudulent one because none of us signed for that. The whole incident that took place on the Lagos Ibano Expressway where we saw Chief Sunday Igbo took off his clothes because he was stopped not because he was not recognized. His name was mentioned. That who? Where is Chief Sunday Bowo? And he answered back. That Taniwo. Tanie. Because one of the DSS. Knew he was coming in that vehicle. And that means. They wanted to take him away. To unknown location. But as the creator and the person of Chief Sunday Bowo, Chief Sunday Bowo is not just an ordinary individual. His face is around every part of the world. And those that saw that that was Chief Sunday Bowo started coming down from their vehicles in their numbers and we saw that video because that video is still where it is for those of you that might want to go back and check that record people were coming out we are Nigba. we will not allow you to take the man that loves his people Motiwa life, a bomb more life, you see. I already okay. So what then happened was what then happened was that Chief Sunday will continue his journey to Lagos on that fateful day. And that meeting was held. And he came back. But the Fulani Aousa fraudulent federal government operating on the 1999 fake constitution came out to deny that they were never involved in that siege. Because that was again another siege. S-I-E-G-E. -E. Because they were waiting for him to get closer until they wanted to accost and take him away but that never happened
The federal government denied it. And say again, even though there was enough evidence with their vehicles, with faces, but it was denied. And since then, we thought it was over. Until another unknown soldiers, again in the military uniform, came very close to the well-fortified building, well-secured CCTV building that can monitor a mile's distance of those that might think that they can make it down and create havoc to Chief Sunday Bowo and all his team. And again, we were able to pick those two uniformed military and they told us they were coming out of their barracks. There were more than two, but we were able to pick two out of them, plus, plus two civilians. Plus two civilians. And we were able to show them to the world and the Yorubas around the globe. Again, as usual, the Fulani Aousa government operating on the fraudulent 1999 constitution came out and denied. They came out to deny the atrocity They came out to deny the atrocity. And we talked again. It was over. But the federal government again does not want Chief Sunday Bowo to continue to talk. And another Fulani was sent down to his mother's house. But again, they were captured. And we showed you that individual. But what has happened today? Because we have our own intelligence, we were able to know well in advance the approach of the federal government coming closer to the resident, private resident, of Chief Sunday Bo's house. If you follow the broadcast that we produced at about from two hours ago, there were a lot of gunshots, multiple gunshots. And those were the job of the federal government. Coming to the resident of Chief Sunday Bowo's house. Was that a courtesy visit? Or was that just a visit to kill Chief Sunday Bowo or to kidnap him if they can or to create havoc and damage? And for good two hours if not two and a half hours, there was a kind of confrontation between the team and the federal government agent that came across to that resident. The situation currently is still on a high alert, even though we've been able to push them back. But as I speak right now, we are still on a high red alert. But before today, we saw again that a letter was sent to the resident. And we refused to take that letter 
because history reminds us that a similar letter was sent by the previous government of the day then that killed Delegiwa. And Delegiwa, till date, we've never got justice for him. Till I speak right now, no one has been found guilty of the death of the late brilliant journalist Delegiwa that was killed. So we didn't take that letter. And ever since then, there has been so many rumors that the military will come. We know because we also have our own intelligence. So you don't have to tell us that the military will come. We also know that the military wants to shut down Chief Sunday Bowo from not asking for the right of his people, which is allowed under the international law. We are aware of that well in advance before anybody can tell us and that means we are much more prepared and that is why we have continuously prepared day night afternoon because we know that they will operate more in the middle of the early hours of the day than during the afternoon. Because everybody knows that the operation that carries out in the afternoon will also maybe have a bit more havoc or have more eyes to pinpoint and say these are the people. But in the early hours of the night, with people that are face masks and weld harm to their tooth, carrying one of the most sophisticated weapons in the middle of the night at around 2 a.m., these individuals have not come to play. These individuals in the military uniform have not come down to joke. These individuals in the military vehicle have not come down to joke and they've come down to kill and destroy. We are aware of these prior to today and that means they are more rehaza in preparedness for them we might not tell you for chief sunday but with safety where he is at the moment likewise his family but i can tell the whole world that chief sunday Bo is fine and all the units around him are doing very well for those of you that might want to come down close to that vicinity in the morning, I would advise you for now maybe to stay away because of the security surrounding the whole area. Security have been increased. Security have been beefed up because those that came with every machine gun are ready to kill and they are not joking those that have traveled to come down with heavy firing that we can all hear from the previous broadcast have not come down to joke i would like to say to those of you that are watching us at home and the Yoruba diaspora outside that Chief Sunday Bowo is doing very well. It's fine. I won't say more than that. Likewise, his family. I am the spokesman for Chief Sunday Bowo, and every details of what I've said is exactly how it has occurred. And looking at my time here, 
It's just coming up to 14 minutes past 5 in the morning. And you can see that we have been on air for almost three and a half hours when the whole siege started. Should we be concerned as Yoruba people? I would say no. Should we be worried? I would say no. Should we be scared? I would say no. Should we remain focused? Oh yes, we will remain focused. The federal government of Nigeria and the Fulani Caliphate government wants to put fear in the heart of millions of Yorubas, especially those at home. But I would like to speak directly to every Yoruba sons and daughters today that there's nothing for you to be scared of. There's nothing for you to be worried of. And there's nothing for you to be panic. Yoruba lo sokwe ko sin tombo lo ke ti ile oba. I will repeat that again. Ko sin tombo lo ke ti ile yo liba. There is nothing coming from the top that the ground cannot sustain. We understand that millions of you might be concerned Millions of you might be worried. Millions of you. But what we will say is, we remain focused. We remain absolutely on the same that Nigeria must come out of Yoruba land. Because Nigeria was forced on every single one of us. Nigeria was put on us by those that believe it was in their own best interest. Nigeria was forced on every Nigerian. Nobody was a Nigerian. Nobody. It was the amalgamation of 1914 that brought us all together. And since the 1914, there have never been peace in the land. Go back to history. Since the amalgamation that joined us together with the remaining part of the country. There have never been peace in the land. Since the 1914 amalgamation, the Yorubas, the Igbos, and the remaining tribes have never known peace at all. Peace has been taken away from the land. And coming forward for the 19, 1960 independence, we all knew after so many years, that there was a different hidden agenda behind it. And the hidden agenda is what is playing out in the 21st century after 100 years of amalgamation. And that has been the danger, the havoc. That everybody has faced. Those that believe that they can hold us all together might not understand that it might be good then for the goods for them by bringing us all together in one unit. It might be better for them in 1914 to bring all the tribes that do not speak the same language, do not have the same culture, and not on the same land, have different identity 
the careless then in 1914. The careless then in 1914. And they decided to bring the forced marriage on everybody. And since then, till date, there have never been any hope, peace on the land. But as the 1914 amalgamation that brought this unity called Nigeria today, where we are all now forced to be called Nigerians because you believe that a Nigerian passport identify you as a Nigerian. We were forced on that. Nigeria was forced on us. We never signed for Nigeria. And that amalgamation has now not just expired, does not work in today's 21st century. It might be good then, but it is no longer good because we are now being killed by terrorists across the Yoruba land and also the remaining part of the Southeast. And if the federal government in their own thinking still believe that the unity of Nigeria is not negotiable, we will tell them that the unity of Nigeria has now become a threat to lives. We will use all the diplomacy routes, but we will prepare for the worst case scenario. And the worst case scenario means, just like we saw at the early hours of today, if we have to defend ourselves, we will do so without taking any order from the international community or any other countries around the world because life is already a threat and we will do everything that we need to do and what we are saying now is every one of us should know that threat to lives of the Yorubas is not just your Sunday boo. It is also threat to life to millions of Yorubas around the world. You might not literally be living in Nigeria. But that does not mean threat to life does not affect you. Don't look at it as those at home are the one facing the burden. Every single Yoruba sons and daughters, you're also facing the same burden. Regardless of your new status outside the country. Your status outside the country only gives you a little bit of privilege. A little bit of privilege that might be different from the lives of the Yorubas inside this monster unity called Nigeria where every single body knows that we have been marginalized genocide is currently taking place not today it's been going on for years where more people regardless of their fate have been killed whether you're from the traditional side whether you are a religion from the Christianity or Muslim or you believe none at all more people have been killed so that means if you on the other side of the globe think that we on the ground because of the gunshot are the only threat to the federal government, you are also a threat because for every time you get into that fraudulent Muritala Mohammed airport, you will be harassed, you will be detained, you will be accused of being an Nigerian. And that means your own threat is right at the airport. You might literally say, well, I am not coming home. 
because there is no home to come to. That is good. But the threat to your life still means as you are sending money home to the fraudulent country under the fraudulent 1999 constitution, under the fraudulent 1914 amalgamation, under the fraudulent Fulani Caliphate, for every dollar you send home, Fulani controls that dollar. Why you are working tirelessly for that dollar? Why you are working tirelessly for that pound sterling? But the Fulani man decide on every single dollar because you refuse to do the right thing. So we shouldn't at any point think that the danger that we are currently facing in today's 419 Nigeria is affecting every single one of us. Don't look at it as my problem. If I don't say a good morning to anyone, I will say good morning to my mom that have stood by me. I can see her on the timeline. And I say good morning to the rest of the people that are watching as well. Let us remember that the fight for freedom from the fraudulent amalgamation is a fight for every single one of us. This is not a fight of a political movement. We are not fighting to overthrow the government. We are fighting because the government of the 1914 amalgamation have overthrown the Yoruba people from their land. We are not fighting to take down the federal government. We are fighting because the 1914 amalgamation have taken us away from who we are. And we all must understand that. We have people that keep saying, let us give chance and room for democracy. My question is, how can you find a democracy when we were merged by a country that decide on our behalf? Can I, Ola Yomikoiki, or those of you watching me, decide on how the country that amalgamate us in terms of who we are. Can I go to Great Britain that brought us this problem and say to them, I want to change your name from Great Britain to another name and merge you together with Ukraine. Can we merge Great Britain with another country? So if Great Britain can come out of EU conveniently without no bloodshed, even though they were meant to be part of that system that set up European Union. But even though they were in that union, at no point were they using EU currency for a very long time. Yes, they were working together in terms of different areas of lives. But if I wanted before the EU break away of the Great Britain. I wouldn't go to Germany as at last year and spend a British pound. I will have to change that pound to European money because EU would not accept that pound sterling from me. That shows that Great Britain knew what they were doing by not allowing their full currency to be used in the EU format. That means Great Britain knew that the situation in terms of their unity between all the European countries was becoming a stressful one for them for economical reason, for security reason, for so many reasons known to those in the power of the Great Britain. My question then is, 
Why then should people of another more life, they say, I am live currently now. So my lesser, more life. I'm, I'm reading, I'm giving an update. Please do not call yet. It is the update of what took place at the resident of Chief Sunday Bowo, where the Nigerian federal government also at about two o'clock in the morning sent their security operatives to kill, maim, destroy anything close within that range. My question now again is why should we continue to wait on Great Britain to divide Nigeria knowing that the unity is what they want even though the unity has been marginalized since 1960 based on every evidence that we have and a lot of you can go back to history and understand that evidence the unity that joined us together in 1960 that unity is no longer in existence that unity has been destroyed crumbled by the military that unity has failed millions of nigerians that unity of 1960 is why some people are hoping that you can change the narratives of nigeria by bringing in the best problems that you cannot solve the problem of nigeria is the 1914 amalgamation it's not just the 1999 constitution that is just coming after the problem of this 1914 and the 1960 because we all knew how that unity was forced on us by great britain my question then is are we going to continue like this for another 200 years or another 100 years do you believe that we should continue on this journey of this unity brought on us for another four years because some Yorubas wants to become the next president not looking at the history that brought us together to this danger not looking at millions of people that were forced to be called Nigerians by Great Britain because the reason why you and myself are known as Nigerians today is in the hands of Great Britain. We mention Lugard all the time, but Lugard was giving a report back to Great Britain in 1914 when he amalgamated us together. Lugard at no point made that decision on his own. Lugard could have been thinking in a different way, but he proposed then as at 1914 which is quite a long time ago to his masters back in great britain that would it not have been better to merge these three protectorate together and that is why we are facing the havoc the killings the atrocities that is taking place on our land today so if you are still of the mindset that you can change the mindset of the Fulani man that is now controlling our resources, you will have to wait another world or another life to do so. The reason that is because that unity is in the hands of one tribe and that tribe alone means they are not ready to let go the power. They believe that they are born to rule. And that means myself and you. We know at no chance. Not because we want to be the president. Or we want to be the governors. Or we want to be the senator. That is not what we are talking about. What we are talking about is. The 
land that belongs to us while the 1914 amalgamation was forced on us is now being encroached by the terrorists around the Yoruba land and they are not ready to let go because they have the backing of the Fulani Caliphate in the government should we be scared of them? I don't think so. There is nothing for us to be scared of the government. And there is still nothing for us to be worried about. We will continue what we are doing best. Our rally will continue across the Yoruba land. We will continue to monitor the situation on a daily basis. We will continue We will continue to prepare the minds of our people that Nigeria is not our country. Nigeria hired inside the Yoruba land. The Yoruba land is the country, but Nigeria was forced on every single Nigerian. And you must understand that there was nothing at no point, at no time. That we say we wanted to be Nigerians. Because Nigeria was never a country. We have the Yoruba kingdom for thousands of years until Great Britain destroyed that empire for their own selfish gain until Great Britain decided that we the Yorubas are not what as a human being and the remaining tribes by joining us together with those that have now become a blood sucker on our land for those that have now taken the message of false hope to our people and let me put this on record that the federal government is making use of all the Yoruba's politicians from the governors, senators, House of Representatives and all their cohorts to create fear on us because those individuals I've mentioned are giving the federal government hope that they can calm us down, they can do and undo on us. And we will continue to use this medium, especially with incidents of such that took place at the early hours of today. That as a governor, you don't have any right on us anymore because that constitution has been void. As a sitting senator, you are only representing your family and yourself on behalf of your family and yourselves. As a sitting house of representatives, you are representing yourself and your families and maybe those of your friends that lick your ass. You are not representing the Yorubas anymore. Because we, the Yorubas, have said that that 1999 fraudulent constitution is void. And the 1914 amalgamation that was forced on myself and the rest of millions of Yorubas even if it has not expired, we have expired it already. Because that amalgamation, I never signed for it. You never signed for it. None of us signed for that amalgamation. We saw the atrocity being committed in Southeast by the federal government. Don't be deceived that it is not the same atrocity that might be unleashed within the southwest in the next couple of days and that means we must all remain vigilant that means we must all remain focused that means every single one of us it is not about calling me it is about you doing the right thing at this junction to defend yourself it is not about you asking by disturbing me it is now for you to consult among yourselves 
and defend yourself. Don't take this lightly. Don't take this as a joke. Don't take this as just something being said and you've just listened and walk away. This is not that time. The time is fast changing. Situation is changing on a daily basis. I will use this medium again. To advise all our present governors according to their own constitution, because they are not representing us, that we, the Yorubas currently on ground, we will hold rally without taking any consultation from our kings, from our ballets, from any one of their fuckery. We are not going to take any consultation from them. We will move rally from one end to the other and if it means that we are confronted even though we have told every single one of our boys and women that are going for the rally to remain vigilant but to not go and push in front of any security operatives but if any security operatives at any state, up to Kwara State, and Kogi, Ondo, Oshun, Ekiti, and Oyo, and the Lagos, that a lot of you believe that we cannot shut down, threaten, push us, we will fire back hard on them. We will go very hard on every security across the Southwest, not just in that particular state. To be for one is to be for, I'm sure you know what I mean. We are not threatening them. We are only telling them. More less or a couple more live broadcast, okay? Hello, Shelly. Emma Berry, Emma, in two Shelly, Colomata, Tebafima Boni Kemabo, Emma Berry, Kilo Shelly, okay? It's not the time for asking us the question now. Asking all these stupid questions. It's not the time. We haven't got the time for that now. Once again, we put every one of our team on high alert. I say it loud and clear that any security operatives that push us, we will go hard on you, regardless of whether you are Yoruba, Igbo, or the Fulani caliphate in the uniform we will move around every day while we continue with our rally you will not arrest any Yoruba man or woman campaigning for what they believe on if you do so we will take down the whole building the whole fucking building we will take it down and this is exactly what we're going to do. It has got to that stage that we will hit hard. Because you will not threaten us on our land. We put every single one of us that are watching. Don't ask me what to do. Ask yourself what you have to do. Don't call and say, what next? If they can make attempt to want to kill Chief Sunday Bowo or to kidnap or whatever intention that they have in the middle of the early hours of this morning, that means we raise the bar to defend ourselves wherever we go. We will defend ourselves with whatever is in our possession. We will defend ourselves. So that we would let it so be. Because the country is already at flames where Fulanese terrorists have kidnapped, killed innocent Nigerians and no one says anything. The international community 
have kept mute. The international community are looking as if nothing is happening in the country called Nigeria. The international community are closing their eyes because the fake government in power. This is not about APC or PDP. This is about Yoruba people that have been kept in bondage for a very, very long time. We will continue with the peaceful way as we are doing and the diplomacy. But I am just putting these message across that none of our young men and women going from town to town, speaking to our people, telling them the reason we should come out of Nigeria and they will not be threatened. But if they get to be threatened, that means we will also have to do what we have to do. At the moment, the country is already at war. For those of you that keep saying you don't want to go into a war, we are at war where unknown gunmen are killing innocent lives while the terrorists are picking up 1, 10, 18, 14, 44, 50, 80 innocent lives in a country called Lukishon. Nigeria, but nobody seems to be caring because that does not have anything to do with you. I will not pick so many calls, but you have to do, and that's why I've come back on again to give advice that every one of us should not be bothered to be asking what is happening. Whatever is happening is what we've told you. I am the spokesman of Chief Sunday Bowo, and that means I have told you exactly what has happened. And I'm also using this opportunity as my own name, Allah Yomikoiki, that we should all be prepared for the eventuality that you could also be a target. And that means you must also do whatever you can to support your own people. Whether one, two, three, four. Situation can change. As you all saw it. At the early hours of this morning. When the federal government sent their security operatives at about 2 a.m. today. Either to kill, kidnap or threaten us. And that also means that we would defend with whatever we can within us as well. On that note, I will say a very good morning to those of you that have joined us. And um, we will continue to update you all as we go further. Fanfani, I want in your tea, what tea? I think sorrow, let it be what I think on tea. Elima fee, Emima ba, or you booty at him by sorrow. Tea, I think sorrow, let them come. In Toshele, ni I go make you ruiny. Only pay it job at Nigeria, Tia Mossy, federal government. One 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 in your one wa. Kilona wa she, la go make you ru. Se ko wa pa baba wa ti sunday gbowo ni abi ko wa mu ni aye abi ko wa damage awon to wa ni aye ka won eni ba rowo video ta koko se ni gbara e ma gbo oru ebon to ndun pekekekekekekekekeke lara won ibon ti awon ti wo ko wa to fi fi wa ba wa ja a wa fi ye gbogbo mo ka ro jire ni bi kibi te ba wa Lokuni, lopuni, asiko ti awa yi, asiko ti ama lò de shokoto wa da da, ni tori pe, ake mò, in ti ansoy, o si le ma lò, bo si in lò, from the diplomacy side of things, ti ba so pe diplomacy, that means pe, asi mba won lu kon soro, pe ama lò, eja lò, ape lò, ki la won gbe se, a mwa toba dikpe, o dikbaz bos. 
ti o tete lò mò kwe, bas bò si pede. Koma lò bè ni o jiji. Inye la shen sò kwe, kasso o kon shokoto wada da. Mò tire ek bòm yatata ni bè. Ba yò, ti mò mò kwe, ki ilè to mò, wakò wè li lori, eni ba mò wè kò, ekò. Aj ma isu statement, ti lè ba mò da da, pò gbò gbò nti ek bò lè nò mè kpata, kpata. E mi ni ak bè nò sò, baba wà chif sonde, i gbò wò, gbò gbò nti mò dè sò, bè, kà yè lò xeri, bè ba lò wà wò nò ta kò kò fi wò nyi, e rik pè, e mi wà, ni, i nò lè, pòt, i kò nò xè lè rèk pè tè lè nyi ta, ti bò nò dùn rèk pè tè, a sò prè sè, a dù kè fè lè dù mà rè, bò tì nti mà a sò fè nò gò wà nè pè, ni wà kà ti, la si kò yi, Ko yi shek pe ke wa ma ak pe a gomi. Pe ko yi ki, ki lo shele, into shele le ti gbo. Ki la ma a she, into luka luko ba le she, o ni ko lo she, si ak bi bi e. A wa le defendi bi ba e da a da. Inje, wa le defende be, ni kwa ra, la a roy, ti wa la ba de. Inje, wa le defende, ni ogun, ti wa la ba de. Inje, wa le defende, ni Lagos, ni tori pe, pi wa la ba de ton, ki, Koma da bi pe, akpa kan, o lò lè, akpa ke jò lè lò lè. A niri jù ba e lò, lò ri, e to ti a rò e. Bi xe man sò, o goun, o ti wà ni, a yi ka wà. A wà ni a e ti mò, bo o goun ti de. O goun ekonomi, o ti wà lè, a wà yon lè jè on. O goun insecurity. O le yonin, la ti ilu konsi lu keji. Koma fi so kon pe, o she she pe moto ti, o lò ni wajou, a ti ti nou ti wawa, fula ni ma daduro, wajbe wano bo lò. Mo ki bo bo, wani bi ti, eti lan fana ti gbo wà. A ni ri jubay lò, bo ba shen lò, a ma obde ti wà. Oru kome len konsi ni, o la yomi kwa iki. Agbe nou sò, baba wà chif sonde, igbo wò. O da rò, eka rò, eka son. Ni tori kpe, ilu to luka luku wa, a se kototoni, wo shi jeni yaw.